How's it going, everybody? Uh, that was a way better introduction to me than I possibly could have done for myself. Uh, I want to talk to you all about the uh, ethical implant. Ooh, this thing's got a laser? Yeah, it does. Uh, the ethical implications of building a real life Skynet. Uh, it, and yes, I am talking about the one from like the, the Terminator franchise. Um, so would humans uh, be better off afterwards? We really have to consider this question. And since the answer is no, we shouldn't do it. Uh, so that's, the answer. that's my talk. Thank you very much. Um, no, okay, so uh, really I want to talk up to you about uh, Hollywood and the machines. Um, ooh, I, these, are, these slides are about a month old when our stuff was still trying to learn how to spell. Uh, so boom, there we go. Sorry, NVIDIA looks like it's Hollywood AMD, the machines, uh, uh, artificial intelligence for filmmaking. Um, we're working on it, okay? It's better now. Uh, two things that, that AI is bad at, hands and text. Not anymore. So uh, yeah, my name is Joe Penna. I started Windows 98 Plus, uh, and then I was going to be uh, coming to MIT. Uh, I didn't get in, so I uh, went to UMass instead, because uh, that's what we do here, right? Uh, just, yeah, when we're in Massachusetts. So um, started uh, in biology. I was going to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. D -d didn't do it. So I started working into uh, VFX. Started working at VFX here in Boston. Um, did a lot of uh, rotoscoping, which I recommend against, uh, just for your life. Uh, it's you know basically where you're just drawing around pe people. I still sometimes see the the silhouettes around people's head whenever I'm, I'm tired. So from there I started uh, working on um, productions. You know actually working on productions, lugging cables and cameras around. Um, and I was sick and tired of doing it, so I, there's this new website called YouTube that I started uh, working on, so uh, yeah, yeah, I started making fun little videos, you know, like rigging up a piano to play um, little cups of water, um, playing the Brazilian National Anthem, I'm from Brazil, uh, you know, so uh, doing a lot of stop motion, animation, did a lot of VFX there because I had some experience from VFX, so I uh, started building a little team, just a couple buddies to help me out, just don't look at this uh, at the moment. Uh, and, and then that team started getting bigger and bigger. Uh, started getting a lot of interest from people, a lot of um, uh, music videos. Uh, I did music video for Avicii. Uh, I started working with uh, Charlie Puth, who's a buddy. Uh, and uh, that's what we do in Hollywood, was just name drop over and over and over. <laughs> uh, started doing tours, uh, did fights where you know there's no gravity and things like that. Um, and, you know, we were doing some, some really technically advanced filmmaking and putting a lot of hours into it. And there's a whole lot of images of me covering my mouth and thinking about how the hell we're going to do this. Um, and then just no pressure at all. Articles started coming out like this, uh, where my agency uh, that I finally got signed to, the one of the first YouTubers to get signed to uh, Creative Artist Agency, which has all the, all the fancy people, right? So now I'm going to get to make movies. And then I didn't, because that's not how agencies work. They just take the 10% once the movies are coming to you. So I'm like, forget about it. I'm just going to make my own movies. I uh, found some actors who were really excited. So I started making some short films, all of them still re really technically um, inclined. So this is, for example, a, a, a big machine that's usually built to build cars, um, but it can move cameras in the same way over and over again. So it's the first uh, motion control short film to get into Sundance and to get into Tribeca and, and places like that. So that's what started happening. Um, and then everyone kept saying, hey, what's going to be your first feature film? And I'm like, am I allowed to make features? Uh, you know, like 90 minutes, 100 minutes? If so, then I'll do it. Um, for some reason, the Brazilian guy decided to shoot a movie in Iceland. Uh, so that's Mads Mikkelsen there. And the movie was so great. I'm very excited about it. I was very cold. Please go watch it. It's on Netflix now. Um, but uh, it went to the Cannes Film Festival, you know, where in um, we it was an official selection, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, right before the pandemic. Um, and I got to take some fancy pictures like that. Uh, and then I made another movie that was even more technically challenging. Um, and for example, here is uh, some of the technology that we were using. This is 
two Xbox controllers plus like what, a phone that has like a, a camera that knows exactly how I'm moving. So I got to shoot the movie before I shot the movie. When I have a, a Hollywood celebrity hanging from wires, I want to know exactly what my shot's going to be because they're going to be complaining. Uh, so uh, here I get to do it over and over again. I didn't like that shot, so I go back and try again, 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 again. And then we started shooting with what they now call the Mandalorian tech, but we did it first, okay? Uh, <laughs> we just put a bunch of uh, LED screens and projectors and things like that to make it look like they're out in space. Um, and that movie had Anna Kendrick in it, uh, Tony Collette, the other Kim, um, and yeah, a lot of different things that we were doing that were advancing the technology for filmmaking. Um, like knowing exactly where they're gonna be, for example. Uh, and then, you know, she said, hey, I wanna direct my first movie. I'm like, because you saw how easy it was. If, if some idiot like me can do it, then maybe you can do it too. She's like, kind of, so uh, do you wanna produce it? Uh, so then I did. Um, and I wanna show you guys some of the generative tech that we used for that movie. I think it was the first movie to use some of this generative tech. Before the movie, this is what generative tech was. When you type in Joe Penna in the style of Van Gogh, you just get Van Gogh, right? After the movie was done, two or three months later, this is what it looked like, right? This is before and after uh, in the style of um, Caravaggio or something like that, right? This is uh, the Garyo type of Joe Penna before and after, right? Uh, and this is using a technology called Dream Booth. I um, worked on that technology a lot in order to be able to make the movie work. Uh, and I'll explain to you how. This is Joe Penna as a, a character in Game of Thrones before and after, right? Um, before and after, I don't know what's happening there. Uh, but hey, uh, afterwards, my son loves this. Uh, Joe Penna is a the hot model who's, who's, who can do cool things before. I've really been working on my abs, my 16 and a half pack. <laughs> afterwards, looks a little better, <laughs> right? Um, so what can we do for movies? These are just fun to have as like, hey, check this out, it's a picture of me when I used to be a model. No, actually, no, I, I didn't. It's just I, I don't work out nearly enough, right? Um, this, this is what, it's, um, what it can be used for. I can work with a concept artist much faster because I don't have to be using words in order to be describing and wasting their time, you know? Like, this is the kind of stuff that if I were to, is it perfect? No, like, this, he's supposed to be wearing a, a red outfit, not a red bandana, you know? But I can send this to my concept artist and say something like this, you know? Something like that, something like this. Um, this is for a project called Feeds. Um, you know, and do I have to send the concept art? No, I can actually send like final things like this for my cinematographer, right? This is what it, what it looked like, cinematography looked like about a month ago. This is what it looked like about two weeks ago, right? And um, this is all using Stable Diffusion. Uh, this one specifically, Stable Diffusion XL that my team is working on. Um, so, and uh, nowadays, this is two weeks ago, this is much better nowadays. I can't show it to you yet, um, what it looks like. And also another thing I'm not supposed to be showing you is this. Uh, you're the very first people to see the stills from uh, Anna's movie, The Dating Game. Uh, it's, please don't tell her that I'm showing you this. She, she, she's evil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even though he's the serial killer in the movie. And, and that's what the movie is, uh, right? It's a story about a, a true story, for, in fact, about a 1970s uh, serial killer that would take pictures of his victims before killing them. Um, and in the movie, there's this prop that as a producer, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh fuck. Can I say fuck? Oh fuck, is what I said, right? Like, um, because it, it's a photo album of, of images of like a hundred different people, right? Uh, and it's, it's a major moment in the movie where you realize how many people has this guy. Oh my God, please don't tell her that. Is this being recorded? That I'm spoiling the movie. But anyways, like, it's a hundred different people, right? And it, it's not, it's like they're all 18, 19, 20 years old, right? It's all like SAG rates. Uh, there was like some nudity involved. And we would have had to give them all COVID tests and, and, and pay them extra and all like, oh my God, this would have cost $150,000. Like, and there were some kids involved too. And we were like, we can't afford this. You're gonna have to play it all on their face and be like, oh my goodness, look how many people you have in this photo album. Oh my God. And that would have been just so lame. 
but thankfully we didn't have to because those were all people who didn't exist and these were all AI. We were having, literally we were having issues finding people, right? So I was able to send about a thousand images for her that were in the style of the photographer, didn't have that person. So let me just interrupt for four seconds. Who's yeah, right. glad they came to hear this talk? I just want to be really clear. This is our last talk. And after this talk, we need to be out of the building because there's something else happening after this. This will not be in your final recording. Don't You're worry. Good. Oh, there is a recording. And, Shit. and Leonard, <laughs> Leonard, stand up, Leonard. Leonard spent 100 hours on a presentation he was going to show after this, but we're going to cancel that. He's going to do it at TEDxMIT on April 22nd at CSAIL, and he's going to come by the social. Who's coming to my office for the post-event social? He's going to do a version of it there. We're not going to record it, and that's going to be the swag that you all are going to get. But this is our closer, and what do you need to do after you hear this talk? Get out of here. Hey, Jackie? <laughs> yeah. so, so sorry to interrupt, sorry to, uh, but, but this is, good. he's just getting started. You got no, nine I more got, minutes. I got nine minutes and 40 seconds. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you, thank you, yeah, that's good to know. That I'm the closer, all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, we were able to send, I was able to make all of these overnight in the style of the photographer, so we're not having to deal with like actually using some of the of the, the victims um, and some of the people who we don't know who they are, you know, like the problems with ethics, problems with like actually finding the, the people who wanted to pay get paid like minimum SAG minimums to, to be in some serial killer's book, uh, you know, like uh, in Vancouver, like oh my gosh, like <laughs> this would have been a prop that we could not have made without AI, we would have to cut it from the movie. So people are like, oh, you know, AI is gonna be taking jobs. Yes, yes. Uh, but like, not, not these ones. These are jobs that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, other things that we did. Oh my God, please don't let her know. Uh, that, <laughs> I'm sure it's like, we didn't have time for a wide shot this day. Uh, in fact, it would have cost like, thousands, tens of thousands of extra dollars because people were already going to overtime. And every single second that you go overtime, the unions rightfully charge you a ton of time. Those people need to be get home, you know, eating dinner with their family. So what are you going to do when you don't get a wide shot of this? You just make it. You can outpaint it, right? Um, as long as people don't cross the edges of the frames, you're good. Like all this is fake. All of, you can see before and after. You know, all that's fake. Um, eventually, we'll be able to do the same kind of things for movies. For example, they shot like this. You still have some information on the outsides. You know, here is where they cropped the movie before, or the show here in this case. You just remove all that stuff, right? Um, no big deal. Again, like, if this is doable, then this is doable, right? Uh, we can... <laughs> We can change um, all kinds of images to, to have, like, no longer am I going to have to waste my actor's time, like, taking pictures for, for posters and things like that on, on a set, right? I can do it just like this, right? And, and it's, it's that level of quality that we're now able to get to. And this, again, is three months old. The stuff today is way better, right? Um, so people are like, whoa, so the movies are just going to become lame things, right? It's just things that you just, what a movie is going to become, you know, the green screen kind of things? No, there's still like there's so much of filmmaking that is so, so much fun, right? Like figuring out what the launch screens look like on my, on my spaceship was, was crazy. Like there's Anna learning how to stitch because she's meant to be a doctor. And, you know, this guy was like, no, do it again, do it again, do it again. And I'm like, oh, she's probably got enough for the, the, the there's no, do it again, do it again. She's got to run lines. Uh, so, you know, getting dressed up in, in like awesome spacesuits that were made specifically, like they're still so much fun. <laughs> but like we don't have to do, and that's what I like telling people is, is like with AI, we don't have to do the things that, that you don't want to do, right? Uh, you just take all that part out. Every artist has these, these moments that they say, oh my gosh, if I could just get rid of this little bit that I, that I do. You know, um, for example, uh, you know, you get into a set and you start working uh, with just, you know, your crew. Like, that's my assistant director, that's just a stand-in. Uh, uh, not just a stand-in, that is, that is a stand-in, an incredibly <laughs> important job on a set. And then that's uh, somebody else. Uh, they must work because they have a little IFB. Uh, so, you know, 
It's wonderful to like try to imagine the movie, but wouldn't it be so much better if I could just change their faces to be the actual people who are in the movie, right? Things like this, everyone that tests shooting cars, because you're either shooting on a green screen and it looks bad, or you're you know, shooting in real life, and, and, and then it kind of you know, works, but then it takes forever to move the camera, and it's like, well, let's do it again, but let, do it a little different, what? You know, <laughs> so it's like, it, it's such a pain, it's called process trailers. But with technology, like Nerf technology, I'll just be able to, like this, this is basically just, the, the, you know, shoot it once and then figure out my edit later inside of the car. Why not? Go over here, go over here, go over there. What about lighting? You know, I can completely relight a scene afterwards if I have like depth maps and things like that, right? And spelling, you know, uh, Stable Diffusion XL and uh, Deep Floyd to some extent can spell really well uh, and it can understand things like, you know, five meerkats wearing different colored sweaters. Okay, fine, yeah, technically those are different colors, but that's not what I meant, guy. You know, and that's way more than five, as opposed to here, right? Like blue square on the left, red ball on the right, boom, right? Um, spelling, so it's just gonna start working well. So why can't we start making like Van Gogh movies, right? But he's in Fast and the Furious, right? <laughs> For example, this is, I just typed in Arctic poster, my first movie, right? This is what came out, and it's not that different from the thing that took us two months to make, right? Uh, and if I have this before, and I fine tune it on his face, all of a sudden it works, right? Um, so there are so many ways that this tech is about to change my industry. It's really gonna be about the studios that embrace AI versus the studios that don't, and the filmmakers that embrace AI versus the ones that don't. Uh, because it's just another tool on our, on our sets. So thank you very much. Uh, let's get out of here. We're late. Thank you all. Thank you.